At 7.42 a.m. on January 5, 1943, Lieutenant Red Cochran was positioned at the stern anti-aircraft battery of the cruiser USS Helena, watching four Japanese VAL bombers approach in a dive over the Guadalcanal Gulf. It was yet another suicide mission, as the gunners had to hit a plane flying at 300 miles per hour with a shell traveling at 2,600 feet per second. The chances of success were practically zero. To shoot down an enemy plane with conventional ammunition, the US Navy needed to fire an average of 2,500 shells. 2,500. Most American ships were destroyed before they could fire that number of shots. The Japanese knew this, their commanders had studied American tactics and were aware of every limitation of the Allied anti-aircraft artillery, openly mocking it. But that morning, something different was loaded into the Helena's 5-inch guns. It was something Japanese engineers considered technically impossible. Something a Japanese admiral, upon hearing the rumors, would have called an American fantasy a radio inside a bullet. Cochrane pulled the trigger. Three shots. The first shell missed by a distance, but the second exploded 50 yards from the VAL bomber, as a direct hit was no longer required. The Japanese plane exploded in mid-air. What happened over the next six hours would forever change the war in the Pacific and lead to the sinking of 12 Japanese ships that never saw the attack coming, because their air cover had been eliminated. The project for that ammunition had begun in 1940 with the problem that conventional explosives only detonated upon direct impact or at a predetermined time making both methods useless against targets moving at 400 miles per hour. The theoretical solution was simple, make the projectile sense when it was near the target and explode automatically. The problem was that this required putting a radio transmitter and receiver inside an artillery shell, and the initial response from the National Defense Research Committee was unanimous, impossible. A 5-inch shell undergoes an acceleration of 20,000 times the force of gravity when fired, which would instantly crush any electronic component, in addition to the projectile spinning at 25,000 revolutions per minute, which no known vacuum tube could survive. But Dr. Merle Tuve, a physicist at the Carnegie Institution, would not accept impossible. His team worked for 18 months in absolute secrecy, creating miniature vacuum tubes encapsulated in wax and developing batteries that functioned in extreme temperatures. The result was called the VT proximity fuse, variable time. The device fit in the nose of a 5-inch shell and worked by continuously emitting radio waves that, when reflected back from a nearby object, such as a plane, triggered the detonator, requiring only a close pass to the target. In August 1942, the cruiser USS Cleveland tested the new ammunition against drones in Chesapeake Bay, three targets, four shots, three kills. The Navy cancelled the rest of the tests and began mass production immediately. But there was a critical problem, absolute secrecy. If a VT fuse fell into enemy hands, especially German, Nazi engineers could replicate it or develop countermeasures. The decision was clear, VT fuses would only be used over the deep sea in the Pacific, ensuring that any unexploded shell would fall into the ocean, miles deep. Commander Deke Parsons personally escorted the first 5,000 VT fuses to New Caledonia in October 1942, and Admiral Halsey distributed the ammunition to three ships operating near Guadalcanal, including the cruiser Helena. The Helena had been attacked 17 times in the last three months, firing over 12,000 conventional shells and only hitting two planes, a brutal rate of 6,000 shots per kill. On January 4, 1943, the ship received 500 special shells, and the crew was trained in absolute secrecy. The VT fuses were marked only MK-32. On the morning of January 5, the Helena and other cruisers bombarded the Japanese airfield at Munda, firing 4,000 shells. At 9 o'clock, Four Aichi DEA VAL dive bombers emerged from the clouds, and one struck the New Zealand cruiser Achilles. The VALS pulled away to 8,000 yards, outside the effective range of conventional artillery, but Lt. Cochran had orders to test the new ammunition. Three shots in six seconds. The first shell exploded near the ocean, and the second detonated 50 yards from one of the VALS. The explosion scattered hundreds of shell fragments in all directions, and the Japanese plane caught fire and plummeted into the sea. The third shot exploded near another VAL, damaging it severely. Two kills with three shots. The Helena's crew was astonished, and the official gunnery report stated, the value of the shell with MK-32 fuse cannot be overemphasized. During the first months of 1943, the Japanese began to realize that something had changed. Veteran pilots reported inexplicable experiences of planes being shot down by air bursts without direct impact. Commander Saburo Sakai, one of Japan's greatest aces, reported that American shells now exploded near his plane even when they didn't hit, as if they knew where we are. 
Japanese naval intelligence tried to discover what was happening but considered it impossible to put a functional radio inside an artillery shell. A Japanese naval intelligence report from April 1943 read, rumors among American prisoners suggest a new type of ammunition. Descriptions are technically implausible. Likely disinformation or exaggeration. Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto himself reportedly commented, sarcastically, that if the Americans put radios inside artillery shells, then they also put entire factories in every ship. He was being facetious, but by the end of 1943, 87 different American companies in 110 factories were producing 40,000 VT fuses a day. In February 1943, the VT fuse found its ideal target, the Mitsubishi G4M Betty torpedo bombers. These twin-engine planes were the main Japanese weapon against Allied ships, flying low and fast. With conventional fuses, reaction time and margin of error were critical, but with VT fuses, the margin of error didn't matter because the shell exploded when it was close to the plane. Naval historian Samuel Elliott Morrison described a night attack, the night flickered with gun flashes. Smoking fuselages and bright bonfires on the surface attested to the accuracy of the anti-aircraft batteries and the efficiency of the super-secret MK-32 fuse. Five of the twelve attacking Bettys were shot down, and an Allied convoy was saved. Throughout 1943, the VT fuse was responsible for 50% of the kills, even though it accounted for only 25% of the ammunition, with an efficiency rate 300% higher than conventional ammunition. The Japanese pilots' confidence in their tactics was rapidly disintegrating. At 1.57 a.m. on July 6, 1943, the cruiser USS Helena opened fire on Japanese destroyers in Kula Gulf. The Helena was a veteran of the VT fuses, but that night, the battle would be fought against ships, not planes. Its rate of fire was devastating, 150 shells per minute. Within 21 minutes, the Japanese destroyer Niizuki was torn apart and sank. But the Helena had exhausted its flashless ammunition and was using conventional powder, which illuminated the ship with every shot, making it a perfect target. Three Type 93 long lance torpedoes struck the Helena. The ship broke into three pieces and sank in less than 20 minutes. 168 men died immediately. Over 700 survivors were left in the water, drifting for eight days, hiding on Japanese-occupied islands, until finally rescued by a special Navy operation. The Helena had been the first ship to use VT fuses in combat. Now, it rested at the bottom of Kula Gulf. Between January 1943 and the end of the war, the VT fuse fundamentally changed the balance of power in the Pacific. Against kamikaze attacks, shells with VT fuses required only 96 shots per kill, while conventional ammunition needed 1,200. During the Battle of Okinawa, the destroyer USS Hadley shot down 42 kamikaze planes in 90 minutes using VT fuses. General George Patton wrote that the new shell was devastating and that a new method of warfare would have to be created. By the end of the war, over 22 million VT fuses had been produced. The Japanese who mocked the radio inside a bullet never managed to develop an equivalent technology and paid for it with the loss of hundreds of planes and, ultimately, the war itself. Commander Deke Parsons, who had escorted the first fuses to the Pacific, moved on to his next project, the atomic bomb. The USS Helena, the first to test the impossible technology, had its hull found in 2018 more than 800 meters deep in Kula Gulf, and its story was never forgotten.